Alright, hi there. Uh, I'm going to go over how we can replace a character model in Tomb Raider 6, The Angel of Darkness. This is for the PC version on Steam. Alright, uh, so you should have the uh, the modding toolkit that I had uh, uploaded. Uh, if you haven't, it's on my DeviantArt, you can download that. Uh, there's three things inside of it. There's the text guide, uh, then you have the character tool for modding the character, and then the archive tool. The archive tool is used to basically collect the assets uh, from the game, uh, so you can start modding with it, because we basically need to use uh, an original character skeleton, uh, so the animations still work. Okay, and then later on, uh, in another video, I'll show what we'll do to use the uh, archive tool to put assets, other assets that we can't uh, easily get at. Now, if you're too, I don't know, busy to go through that step and go through the archive stuff, uh, in the character tool, I've actually included a copy of Laura D, uh, and the 3ds Max scene is in here, along with its textures. So if you're too busy to go through those steps, you can just start uh, right, a, uh, right ahead and just open this file, okay? Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, but for those that who want to go through this uh, normally, what you're going to do is you're going to launch the script. So you're going to go to scripting and then go up to run. And then you're going to navigate to the uh, the tool, the Mac script. That is uh, the character tool folder. You'll find a Mac script called uh, T R A O D C R yeah, pff, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> that's a character tool. So just open that and click open, and then it will take a little, a few seconds, and then you'll you'll get this interface. All right, uh, the interface has been tweaked a little bit uh, since last update, so that you don't have to touch anything this time. Uh, last time there was a lot of fiddling around in 3ds Max and loading and unloading things. Now you just simply import and export. There are, the options are still there, but I'll cover them in other videos. They offer more control over the importing and exporting process, but as it is, they're not important to play with. You're just going to import, and then when you're ready to export, you export. Okay. All right, so we're going to start. We're going to import. <clears throat> I'm going to import one of the original models. So I'm going to maps, backup, Paris 1, Laura D. Okay. That's going to take some time to load. Uh, while it's loading, uh, the textures are going to be unpacked to the same folder as the um, the file you opened. So, for example, if we had opened up this file, it's going to create a folder called lower D, and inside of there is going to be the textures. Uh, the textures themselves are direct all surface. That's .dds. Um, if you're going to replace any textures or add textures to the game, they have to be saved as, as you guessed it, .dds. Um, I recommend compressing them as either dot, sorry, uh, .dxt1 or DXT3, which the game is compatible with, okay? Uh, the max script will try to uh, protect you, but you never know. It might uh, it might not work. What I mean by protect you is it will try to save uh, the textures the right dimensions and format. All right, this opened up here. You'll notice that we get a, a little message box, okay? Uh, one of the extensions that I've added to the format is the ability to save comments into the format, and I'll show that more when we export a model. Alright, so here's our model here. This is Laura Croft's uh, beginning character model when you start a new game. Now, it's worth noting here that once you modify the character and replace it, uh, your previous game saves will not work. Um, I think the reason why this happens is because they actually save the state of memory, like a save state. And of course, when you replace the character model, the save state data doesn't match the data on the file on your hard drive, and so it causes a crash. Uh, so currently, we don't have a fix for that. That means that if you're editing the character, you have to start a new game. That's why I chose this model, okay? So basically, we just replace geometry on here. Now, um, poly budget-wise, uh, this entire import is about 11,000 polygons. Uh, so in general, you want to stay around 11,000 polygons for your budget, uh, but keep in mind that most of the polygons are actually just for guns. She has a lot of guns and other accessories, and that's what's amounting to that figure. Her actual model here, her body model, is only 2,000 polygons. So uh, I've seen some people talk about, oh, hey, I'm going to port this current generation model into this game. That's really not going to work. Uh, currently, current gen models sit around 80,000 polygons. That's not going to fit in this game, so just bear, my, bear that in mind. There are limitations to this game. This game is very old, from 2002 or 2003 and it debuted on the PS2 early in its life cycle, so it is a very old game, so just please understand. All right, so there's just two different types of geometry in this game. Uh, there's geometry that has blend weights, 
and geometry that does not. It's really basic. The ones that have blend weights are basically the ones that will deform around uh, bones. So if we move a bone, you'll see that we'll get this nice deform, deform, deformation on a joint like this, like the shoulder. Um, now the other items are uh, items that don't have the uh, blend weights, they don't have a skin modifier. Um, they're basically just attached to something. So for example, this hammer is attached to the wrist here. Okay. Um, I can change the attachment simply just by clicking on link, clicking on this, holding the left key, left key and then dragging over another bone and then releasing. Now if I move the wrist bone, the hammer will no longer move because I've parented, to, parented that to a different bone. Okay, it's that easy. Uh, again, in the initial video I showed some you know, complicated process, attaching boxes and stuff like that. That's been removed to simplify the process. Okay, so simply you're going to just use the link and unlink to connect your object to one of the bones. Now if you fail to do that, you forget to link that. For example, I'm going to unlink this. That means that it's now orphaned. If I was to move the skeleton, for example, I'm just going to grab this root bone and move to the left. You notice that the hammer here is kind of orphaned. It's just sitting in the middle of nowhere. Um, you can't have that. When you export your geometry to the game, everything has to be parented or uh, weighted to the skeleton. Okay, it's very important. Uh, things like this, which are orphaned, um, they will export, but they might result in a crash. So just make sure that you test for any thing like that, uh, for any orphans. The Mac script, when you export, will test for that and will tell you if you made a mistake, okay? All right, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just export a model to the game. Um, I'm going to be using a uh, previous mod that I did. Oh, it's not there. Is it here? Yes, there it is. Oh, no, that was the same file. This one? Hmm, okay. Uh, so this is a model that I did earlier on, okay? And uh, this is the classic Laura. Okay, we're going to export this out and we're going to test it in the game. Uh, what I'm going to do the save on time, however, because this is a, this process is actually kind of time consuming. Um, to export 10,000 polygons takes about, I don't know, I want to say 10 minutes, which is quite a long time. And I don't want to wait that long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete, um, can delete most of this other geometry. So we're just going to select geometry up here and then select all the geometry, just delete it. Okay, just to make things quicker, okay? And hide that, okay? Now, um, these two items here are not linked, okay? I did that on purpose, so they're orphaned. All right, I'll just export this so that you get an idea what that looks like or feels like. So we're just gonna overwrite this in the character folder. So this is the root, uh, root of our installation folder of Tomb Raider 6. Uh, in the data folder, if you haven't already, you want to create a folder called char care. In that folder is where you can write this file and it will load into the game for you. So we're going to save this as lorad.char. I'm going to save over top of that one. Now we're going to wait for a little bit. It takes a little bit. Uh, as I said, the more polygons you have, the longer it takes. So I strongly disadvise to um, try anything super big. Um, I tried porting a model that had like 80,000 polygons and it took easily 20 minutes, if not a half hour. So uh, just, yeah, just be cautious of that. All right, so I consciously knew that that was gonna happen. Uh, so if you accidentally forget to assign something, it will tell you that they are orphaned, okay? Um, excuse me, so I'm just gonna assign these real quick. Oh man, I don't wanna hiccup so bad. Actually, this goes, this goes to the, yeah, this goes here, and that's the, that's the head. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so I'm gonna export this again. And that's gonna go. All right, I'm gonna be using a, uh, a startup configuration utility. Uh, this is written by uh, uh, Baki or Boki, or I can't remember his name. Um, but I'm using this because uh, I can play the game in Windows mode, which makes it easier for testing. And also I can skip the cinematics, which makes it easier to get to the starting menu and uh, also the debug keys, which are useful. All right, that's exported. And now we're gonna start up the game and have a look.
All right, again, you have to start a new game uh, when you're modifying the character models. And of course, here we go, we have Laura Croft's uh, new model. Okay. Um, there's uh, more topics to be covered. I'll cover those in some other videos, uh, you know, such as adding facial morphs and physics back into the character model, uh, as well as getting into more complex models where we can have normal maps and specular maps. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, take care and have fun modding.